Right friends, welcome back to main events. This is 8th week from 22nd February to 28th February. What are the important events? National Urban Livelihood Mission extended to all the statutory urban bodies. There are 4041 urban bodies. It is extended to all the urban bodies. Then Jats called of the state. Around 19 people killed in the violence and larger issues remain. We are going to discuss about larger issues. Referendum will be held on 23rd June in the United Kingdom to decide whether United Kingdom will continue in European Union or not. Then cessation of hostilities began in Syria, a landmark development and after Coolidge in 1928, now Barack Obama will visit Cuba. Banks Board Bureau constituted a major first step in the transformation of banking system in the country, especially public sector banks. World Trade Organization rules against India in solar cells case. Then ISRO tested indigenously made cryogenic engine and we are going to discuss what is meant by cryogenic engine. And let us look at the issues one by one. First one is the National Urban Livelihood Mission is extended to 4041 statutory urban local bodies in the country. Previously, this program was implemented in 791 urban bodies and now it is extended to 4041 urban local bodies and the name is also changed. In English, it is renamed as Deen Dayal Antyodaya Yojana. And in Hindi, it will be Deen Dayal Anchodaya Yojana Rastriya Shahri Ajivika Mission. And please don't forget, there is a National Rural Livelihood Mission is there, popularly known as NRLM or Ajivika. That is basically responsible for self-help groups, bank loan linkage, self-help groups in rural areas are getting bank loans because of the initiative of National Rural Livelihood Mission and this Urban Livelihood Mission will focus on basically skill development and training, formation of self-help groups in urban areas just like in rural areas, then building shelters for the homeless and at the same time setting up of micro enterprises is also planned under this National Urban Livelihood Mission and from now onwards the name will be Deen Dayal Anchodaya Yojana National Urban Livelihood Mission and in Hindi it will be Deen Dayal Anchodaya Yojana Rastriya Shahri Ajivika Mission please don't forget look into the next issue jots the agitation turned violent Around 19 people lost their lives and at the same time water supply to Delhi was badly affected. They finally called off the stir after a five member committee was constituted headed by Urban Development Minister Venkaya Naidu and the larger issues which are to be discussed especially in parliament I have listed out here. The biggest and the most important issue is job creation in this country. We require at least 10 lakh jobs every month, but we are not able to create required jobs in the country. And this is the main reason for agitations across the country, whether it is from Patidars in Gujarat, Kapus in Andhra Pradesh or Jats in Haryana. And recently, Ahoms in Assam also resorted to agitation with the demand that they be included in scheduled tribes. The second issue is, does it not lead to violent agitations from similar groups demanding reservations like Kapus, Marathas, Patidars across the country? Because recently Kapus agitation also turned violent in Andhra Pradesh and when similar agitations are coming up across the country, government should look at the solution for these type of agitations because they are frequently turning violent in recent times. Third important point is there is a stipulation that all the reservations put together should not exceed 50% and 
how to accommodate all these groups within the framework of 50% that is the biggest question fourth one is is it not to the disadvantage of the groups which are already included in various categories certain cash or in backward communities or bcs and scs sts if there are demands coming from various castes then existing groups which are in these reserved categories may be put to disadvantage so it is the time to look at the issue with the broader framework with the national consensus in parliament the issue is to be debated leaving the petty political concerns or political gains because this issue has got wider ramifications if one looks at the future of this country and next important point is can the political parties disassociate with the reservations for petty political gains and ultimately several cash or demanding inclusion in the reserved categories and does it not lead to proliferation of various caste groups in universities then can we not correlate job creation with gross domestic product we are talking about 7% 7.5% gdp growth but the job creation is not commensurate with gdp that is the biggest challenge the country is facing so these are the broader issues and national consensus is required with regard to the reservations and wider consultations a parliamentary debate is required so as to accommodate various groups in the broader framework so as to prevent further agitations of this kind in future if you look at the issues around the world referendum to decide brexit on 23 june what is brexit exit of britain from european union is called brexit and referendum will be held on june 23 on whether the united kingdom will remain in european union or not united kingdom is totally divided on the issue certain sections of united kingdom want the country to be within the european union and certain sections wants to dissociate with european union so under these circumstances referendum will be held on june 23 and the proponents who are asking for exit from european union says uk's growth is hampered because of its association with european union second important point is european union imposes so many rules on businesses third point is european union charges a lot but do little in return then fourth important point is free movement is the basic tenet of european union and united kingdom does not want to associate with the free movement of people why in the schengen zone around 26 countries are there with the single visa you can travel across all the 26 countries but united kingdom is not part of schengen zone that's why the purpose of european union itself is defeated then there is a perception that germany is dominating the group so under these circumstances the country united kingdom is divided vertically and the referendum will tell us on june 23 whether the country wants to exit from european union or not and you may ask a simple question what is meant by referendum referendum is basically a vote on specific issue a specific issue will be given and you have to say either yes or no it is common in western countries and the side which gets more than half the votes will win finally and everyone in the voting age will take part in this referendum and what is meant by european union you may ask a simple question what is meant by european union european union is the politico economic grouping of 28 countries and please don't forget 19 countries are part of eurozone having single currency second important point is schengen zone was created which allows 
travel across 26 countries with a single visa and the United Kingdom is not a part of these Schengen countries and the total population of European Union is more than 50 crore and the motto is United in Diversity. Headquarters is situated in Brussels, Belgium and the origins if you trace back of this European Union, if you go back to 1957, Initially, six countries formed European Economic Community through Treaty of Rome 1957 and the six countries initially formed were Belgium, France, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, West Germany and subsequently through Maastricht Treaty of 1992, European Union was formed on 1st November 1993. And European Union has got its parliament elected every five years by European Union citizens. And there is a perception in United Kingdom that it is dominated by Germany. And when you are talking about European Union, please don't forget about Eurozone countries where 19 countries have got a single currency. And at the same time, please don't forget Schengen Zone where with a single visa, you can travel across 26 countries. And how it functions? It has got the European Commission. European Commission is basically executive body for day-to-day -day functioning. And European Parliament, it is basically legislative body. Then European Council. European Council is where the heads of the governments will meet. And it has got the European Court of Justice. It is at Luxembourg. So, these four are important organs of this uh, European Union and basically for day-to-day -day functions, the European Commission will be involved and for making various legislations, this uh, European Parliament will come into picture which has 751 members. So, these are the organs which facilitate the functioning of European Union. Now, we have to wait for June 23, whether United Kingdom would like to be with the European Union or not. Cessation of hostilities began in Syria. We have discussed a lot even last week also with regard to Syria. Civil war was started in 2011 and more than 4 million people left the country. and. Turkey is hosting more than 2 million refugees. Germany is home for more than 1 million refugees. And overall, this Syria crisis resulted in displacement of more than 50% of the population, both internally and externally. If you go back to 2011, the population at that time was around 22 million and it now came down to 17 million. And it resulted in death of 2,70,000 people and as we have previously discussed, the President Bashar al-Assad is supported by Iran and Russia and the opposition groups are supported by Saudi Arabia and United States of America and recently cessation of hostilities was declared and it came into effect from midnight of 26th February. You may ask what is cessation of hostilities. Cessation of hostilities is the first step before starting the formal peace process. That means to reduce the animosities, it is informally stopping firing. And the next step will be formal peace process where ceasefire will be signed. So, cessation of hostilities is the first step or you can say informal first step before starting the actual peace process. And anyhow, it is a step in the right direction. And as per this agreement of cessation of hostilities, Russian warplanes were grounded for the first day. And this cessation of hostilities is applicable for the government forces and opposition forces, but not applicable for terrorist organizations like ISIS or Al-Qaeda affiliated Al-Nusra Front. Right, let us hope for some breakthrough as Syria is suffering badly for the past five years. And at the same time, please don't forget, Geneva talks are expected to resume shortly. Next important issue is after Calvin Coolidge in 1928, after a gap of around 88 years, now President Barack Obama will visit Cuba. 
And if you look at the timeline of US Cuba relations, Cuba got independence in 1902. Cuba is very close to United States of America. Please look into this picture. And Thomas Palma became the first president. But here important point is as per Platt Amendment, USA has got a right to interfere in Cuban affairs. And what happened in 1959? 9,000 strong guerrilla army led by Fidel Castro took over Cuba and autocrat Batista fled the country. And in the 1960, the relations between Cuba and USA strained a lot because Fidel Castro nationalized all the United States businesses in the country. And subsequently, in the year 1962, USSR deployed missiles in Cuba, which infuriated the United States of America. In those days, capitalist group of countries was headed by United States of America. Socialist countries or you can say communist bloc was headed by USSR. And it was the era of a Cold War. And in those days, USSR deployed missiles in Cuba. Cuba is very close to United States of America. It infuriated United States of America and subsequently relations strained for more than 50 years. And in the year 2014, Barack Obama and Raul Castro reached a deal to begin the normalization of relations between both the countries. And accordingly, in the year 2015, United States officially removed Cuba from the list of state sponsors of terrorism. And diplomatic relations started between both the countries and now Barack Obama decided to visit Cuba. So, normalization of relations between United States of America and Cuba are on the right track. And this is probably one of the most important achievements of Barack Obama's presidentship. Right? Look into the next issue. Economy and banking, if you look at the events of economy and banking, most important event is Banks Board Bureau constituted. What is the meaning of this Banks Board Bureau? All of you are well aware about the PJ Noyak Committee. To improve the health of public sector banks, PJ Noyak Committee was established and PJ Noyak Committee gave its recommendations and they suggested that the bank's shareholding in government of India should be separated from government of India by establishing bank investment company. So, with the establishment of bank investment company, the shareholding of government of India in public sector banks will be transferred to bank investment company. So, it has to keep public sector banks away from the central government's interference. And before the establishment of bank investment company, as an interim arrangement, the committee suggested Banks Board Bureau. And now this committee was constituted and it is going to be headed by Vinod Rai, former Controller and Auditor General. And it will have three members, three experts. One is Anil Kandelwal, who was former CMD of Bank of Baroda. Then Rupa Kudwa, former MD and CEO of Chrysil. Chrysil is a credit rating organization. Then HN Sainor, former joint MD of ICICI Bank. At the same time, three ex officio members will be there. And it will replace appointment board for appointment of heads of public sector banks, whole time directors, as well as non executive chairman of public sector banks. It will be an autonomous body looking at the problem of bad loans. Banks are badly suffering because of bad loans. And this is constituted almost at the right time because almost all the public sector banks are suffering because of bad loans. Second is it will look at the board level appointments. Third one is it will advise on strategies for raising of funds. Capitalization of banks is the biggest problem now because 
पब्लिक सेक्टर बैंक्स नीड रुपीस वन लैक एटी थाउजेंड क्रोर्स फॉर कैपिटलाइजेशन एंड सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इज गिविंग ओनली सेवेंटी थाउजेंड क्रोर्स इन फोर इयर्स ऑफ टाइम सो दिस एज्यूम्ड सिग्निफिकेंस द एस्टैब्लिशमेंट ऑफ बैंक्स बोर्ड ब्यूरो एज्यूम्ड सिग्निफिकेंस इन व्यू ऑफ सेवरल प्रॉब्लम्स फेस्ड बाय पब्लिक सेक्टर बैंक्स द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम इज बैड डेट्स then it will also give advice with regard to mergers and acquisitions and in future some of these public sector banks are likely to be amalgamated and the constitution of this committee assumed a significance in view of this also right friends the world trade organization rules against india in solar cells case jawaharlal nehru national solar mission all of you are well aware this jawaharlal nehru national solar mission was established in the year 2010 basically so as to give thrust for solar energy and please don't forget government's target is by 2022 1 lakh megawatt of solar energy is to be produced in the country and there is a stipulation under this jawaharlal nehru national solar mission that is with the regard to the local procurement of solar cells and modules that means this is known as domestic content requirement under domestic content requirement this solar cells and modules are to be procured domestically that means they cannot procure items from other countries this is known as domestic content requirement under certain circumstances this clause of domestic content requirement can be incorporated and around 3 years ago united states of america complained to world trade organization against this local procurement clause popularly known as domestic content requirement united states of america complained to wto that this domestic content requirement that is procurement of solar panels and modules from the firms which have manufactured these products only in india is against the trade rules and now wto ruled against india and in favor of united states of america and wto felt that this domestic content requirement clause violated multilateral trade rules as it discriminated against the foreign manufacturers and it struck it down by citing two clauses one under general agreement on tariffs and trade that is as per gat 1994 and the other one as per trims trims is trade related investment measures so citing two clauses this world trade organization struck down india's domestic content requirement clause as wto felt that it violated or it is discriminatory against foreign manufacturers here what is the view of india India's view is as the power generated under Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission was bought by National Dharmal Power Corporation which is public sector undertaking the transaction comes under government procurement there is a clause where government procurements can have domestic content requirement but WTO says domestic content requirement is on power equipment but not on power bought by government undertaking wto felt that this is with regard to the purchase of power equipment like solar cells and modules but government of india's view is as the power is procured by ntpc government of india undertaking so it comes under government procurement but wto said government is purchasing power but not equipment so it is violating the trade rules and anyhow india decided to appeal against the wto ruling Now let us look at the last event ISRO tested indigenously made cryogenic engine 
in cryogenic engines cryogenic fuel or oxidizer are both used you may ask what is the necessity of fuel and oxidizer because to burn the fuel oxygen is required in the natural environment that means at the ground level when burning takes place the fuel will take atmospheric oxygen but when you look at the rockets there will not be any atmosphere there so this oxidizer is to be given separately and accordingly rocket fuels will have both the fuel as well as oxidizer in cryogenic engines these are gases liquefied how to liquefy the gases this oxygen and hydrogen will be in the gaseous form normally they can be converted to liquid form when the temperatures are brought down to very low levels when you take the temperatures down to around minus 150 degree centigrade minus 200 degree centigrade minus 250 degree centigrade these gases can be converted to liquids so in cryogenics this gases converted to liquids and they are used what is the need for converting these gases into liquids because when these gases are converted to liquids for equal amount of fuel you can get more thrust you can produce more energy the purpose of these rockets is to place satellites into orbit so when cryogenic fuels are used you can place higher weight satellites into the orbit that is the advantage of using this cryogenic engines and recently isro successfully test fired these cryogenic engines right and here the fuel is liquid hydrogen that is at minus 253 degree centigrade and oxidizer is liquid oxygen and these are the propellants and it gives a high thrust and this is for the upper stage of gslv mark 3 rocket and they are expected to be launched by december 2016 and if you want more about cryogenics cryogenics is originated from two greek words kairos and genes kairos means cold or freezing genes means born or produced here liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen that means gases in liquid form as they are brought down to very low temperatures they offer the highest energy efficiency for rocket engines and please don't forget oxygen remains at a liquid only at temperatures below minus 183 and hydrogen remains in liquid form below minus 253 degree centigrade right so it is landmark achievement for isro and once this cryogenic engines become successful then 4 ton satellites can be placed in geosynchronous orbit right so the weight of satellites which can be put into orbit can increase because of excessive thrust or excessive energy produced by the rockets right friends with this let us conclude This week's lecture have a nice day please do join for other modules and please don't forget we are producing separate modules for economic survey for railway budget and union budget have a nice day thank you